Welcome to lecture 5 of the course which is on a scale of aerial photograph. Here you will learn how to uh, find out the scale and what is the importance of the scale and how that scale is used now to carry out the measurements from the aerial photograph. Scale is a very very important actually whenever we are dealing with a map, we are dealing with the aerial photograph or we are preparing the map for our project site. So, scale is a uh, deciding factor, we have to decide first of all at what scale we want to show the features, at what scale we want to prepare our maps. So, similarly in the aerial photographs also the scale uh, actually if the scale changes the amount of information which is visible to us by our eye that will change. So, we may not be able to identify uh, the small features from a small scale map, but those features can be identified with a large scale map. So, we have to take a decision on that uh, size of the object, the distance, the area measurements would be much much accurate as we know on a large scale uh, photographs or the map. So, it is very very important now that we have to understand the how the scale is actually changing the uh, amount of information which we are extracting and how it is changing our measurements to some extent. Scale as we define it is the ratio of the two distances. So, whenever we are talking of the map it is the distance on the map to the distance on the ground. When we are talking of the aerial photograph, it is the distance between the two points on the photograph to the uh, same distance, the corresponding distance on the ground. So, we have to measure these two distances and if we take the ratio of that, that defines the scale. Now, it is expressed in three different ways. The scale can be uh, represented numerically something 1 upon 250,000 let us say or in the fraction form because it is a ratio of the two distance. So, more correctly it is 1 upon 25,000 because it is the ratio 1 upon 25,000 means the one unit on the aerial photograph is 25,000 units on the ground. So, if I take let us say 1 centimeter, 1 centimeter on the photograph is 25,000 centimeter on the ground. So, I can actually write something equivalent like 1 centimeter is equal to 250 meter. So, this is a numerical way of representing the scale either way we can write, but very common way of uh, denoting the scale numerically is the first one like 1 is to 25,000 scale but the meaning is same when we represent them. There is another way also to represent the scale and uh, we make linear scales also very frequently whenever we are preparing the maps. If you look at the topographical maps also you have uh, numerical as well as the linear graphical scale. So, we are making that graphical scale because sometimes we have to use those graphical scales if our maps are very old, uh, the paper has a tendency to contract or expand. So, because of the uh, coefficient of linear expansion, because of the temperature, the uh, expansion and contraction activity on the material, uh, what we are doing is we using these old maps and using the linear scale, we carry out the measurement from the linear scale convert into the ground distance. So, in that case the numerical scale may not be that accurate as linear scale where we think that some contraction or expansion of the paper has already taken place. So, there are both ways uh, graphical way as well as the numerical way to show the scale when we are preparing. So, scale of the photograph is not uniform like the maps. In the maps we write a single value and everywhere we assume that the scale is uniform. So, if I take 250,000 map throughout the map sheet 
the scale is 250,000 and I can use this particular figure to carry out the measurements. But in case of a photograph, it is not the case. The scale is not uniform. Why? Because of the perspective projection, because it has been taken based on the perspective projection. Some rays are traveling longer distance to the camera position and the ray from in the center is traveling the shortest distance. So, because of that perspective projection system and because of the relief which is present in the you find the photographs an error. So, we do not have a uniform scale. So, first thing is that we have to compute what is the average scale of the photograph. So, today we are going to learn here now how to calculate the average scale of the photograph and use that value of the average scale if we want to be more precise in our measurements. Broadly, whenever we are talking of the scale, because all our uh, measurements uh, which will be converted into the ground will depend upon the value which uh, we are computing now. So, we have three kind of uh, scales in general, large scale photographs are there, a medium scale photographs and the small scale photographs are there. Now, we have to understand the concept of a scale because it is the ratio of the two distances, distance on the photograph divided by the distance on the ground. So, if you see less zeros here and if you see more zeros here because it is written in the fraction form. So, in large scale I will write this as 1 upon 15,000 in the small scale I will write it 1 upon 50,000. So, I can see very clearly mathematically that the figure from 1 upon 50,000 is lesser mathematically than 1 upon 15,000 this is a large figure. Although, if we look at the 50,000 figure and 15,000 figure, 50,000 figure is much bigger figure than the 15,000. So, do not go with that figure, but go with the basic concept while you are understanding the scale. Mathematically, when you compute the value, if the value is, is small as compared to the other that map is a small scale photograph that photograph is a small scale photograph. So, now uh, let me explain you all the three types of photographs large scale photographs could be 1 is to 10,000 or 1 is to 50,000 photographs and these uh, large scale photographs basically would cover less area. So, if the scale is large the area covered is lesser and detailed more detailed would be there. So, maybe I am able to see individual house, individual streets there, individual tree pattern. So, that all I can see uh, from these photographs. They are very, very useful when I am doing a regional planning or new township planning. Coming to the second category which is the medium scale photograph, the scale might range between 15,000 to 50,000 the medium scale and here the area covered will be more than the large scale photographs, but the amount of detail will not be that good as was in the large scale photograph. So, these photographs are used for example, for district level planning when the area is large we will go for that, when the area is small we will go for the large scale photographs. Now, the last category here is the small scale photograph. Now, in the small scale photograph 1 is to 50,000, 1 is to 80,000, 1 is to uh, 1 million you know they are all small scale photographs are there and they are covering much much larger area now. So, the small scale maps will cover more area much larger area compared to the above two categories and details the small details would disappear you can see only the broad details the generalized details we can identify from that and they are very, very useful for a large area mapping could be the state level or the national level. So, depending upon the extent of the area, depending upon the type of features which we can see 
from those photographs, the type of output which we want to derive from these photographs, we have to make selection of the photographs, whether we want to go for a, a large scale or a medium scale or a small scale photograph. The diagram here is showing you a small scale photograph. So, we are actually when we are dealing with the small scale photograph, you can see here the area covered is very, very large. So, you can uh, cover the maybe the entire township with the one photograph because of the small scale. But if I go from the small scale to the medium scale photograph now, one photograph will cover only the part of the area as you can see that this part of the area is also is, is covered by one photograph. So, I need several photographs in order to cover the equivalent area which I have shown in the small scale photographs. Then I have large scale photograph the third category of the photograph the area becomes further smaller. So, you can see that only a small part of the area is further shown in one single image, but very detailed information. Now, I can see the shape of the building, I can see the orientation of the building and number of a story which are present on the building, but a small area. So, if I have to study the equivalent area which is covered by a small scale with the large scale photographs, I need several photographs. So, that means the amount of time, amount of labor which is required to analyze the photograph now has increased many fold. So, we uh, first of all learn how to calculate the scale of a vertical photograph, because we are dealing most of the time in our engineering surveys vertical photograph. So, most of the formula and most of our discussion will be based on vertical photograph. So, this is a, a very simple diagram which have been done the L is the exposure station, A B is the flat terrain of the ground. So, we are assuming here the terrain is flat. So, A B is the ground, L is the exposure station and uh, photographic plane is this here which is shown by those A B points are shown by small a and b points. Now, we know from our background knowledge that flying height capital H is the height of the exposure station above the ground, focal length is the this 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 distance is the focal length where the uh, image image has been focused and the camera axis is the vertical line which is drawn. So, I have two similar triangles here. So, I have a similar triangle L A B this is one triangle, this is another triangle, they are similar or L A and O this is one triangle and this is another triangle. So, they are similar triangles with the our knowledge of coordinate geometry, we know that it is a simple geometrical figure and they are similar triangles. So, in surveying now we are using the principle of that similar triangles, we are using our knowledge of the coordinate geometry. So, here what we actually uh, have to do is we have to measure two distances because our scale is the ratio of the two distances. So, if we look at the formula of the scale, it is the distance on the photograph between the two points and the same distance uh, on the ground between the same points the distance on the ground. So, that means, if I take uh, O A distance on the photograph and equivalent distance is capital P A on the ground and take the ratio of that I will get the scale. Now, I can replace O A and P A with the property of the similar triangles which I have shown you L A O and L A P by F upon H. So, I can replace this by F upon H. So, scale will be simply the ratio of the two 
parameters ratio of the focal length of the camera lens which is known to us which is a fixed quantity and flying height of the aircraft. So, if I know the flying height of the aircraft at what height the aircraft is flying and the ground is flat focal length is known we can calculate what will be the scale of the photograph. Well, this is a, a very simple problem when we assume that the ground is flat, but in reality ground is not flat, ground has lots of undulations into it. So, we have to consider those undulations ups and downs the relief which is present in the area and then we have to uh, establish a relationship to determine the scale of the photograph. So, here in case of an undulating terrain let us see what is the value of the scale. So, if we understand this figure in fact, this is the terrain which has been shown in this particular diagram the ground profile. So, it has ups and downs and in the ground we have marked four points A, B, C and D there are four points C and D are at a little higher altitude and A and B are at the lower altitude. This is a datum which you can also call as the mean sea level. L is the exposure station. So, one photograph has been taken for this particular ground and on the photograph the corresponding A B C D points are shown by these small letters A B C D on the photographic plane. Capital H is the flying height, F is the focal length of the camera lens they are known to us. So, let us see now again the uh, ratio of the two distances. So, if I take again the ratio of the two distances which is uh, here A O upon A 0 A O A. So, this is that ratio of the two distances and this ratio I can replace by L O and L O dash L O which is this distance which is the focal length and L O dash it is the this distance which is coming out to be here. So, I am now taking the property of the similar triangle which I am drawing for you one is this particular triangle L A O and another is L A and O A. These two triangles I have taken in this formula here and uh, actually use the property of the similar triangle to define the ratio and replace this in terms of the distances. So, f is known to me how much is the distance L and O A that is capital H minus H A. So, there is one more term here which is introduced H A. What is H A? H A is the elevation of point A with respect to a datum. So, I am replacing the ratio by f upon h minus h e. So, this is my equation number 1. Now, let me go to another point, another point is b point. Now, if I want to calculate the scale at b point, now I have to take two triangles L B O and L capital B and I will go to the O A point. So, here again I will have to take the elevation of B point into account and using the similar principle of the similar triangle the ratio of the two distances B O upon B O B can be replaced by F upon H minus H B. What is the difference between now these two equations? F is a constant capital H is a constant for this photograph. What is changing is height of the point itself, the points which are situated on the terrain H A may be different than H B, H B may be different than H C. So, likewise now I can write the relationship for point C and point D. In case of point C I can replace this by H C, in case of D I can replace it by H D. So, that means I know the relationship for scale at several points and the value of this scale will come out to be different because the height which is changing H A, H B, H C, H D they are all different ground is not flat it is undulating. 
So, in other words if I take the average of all the heights I have 4 points here, but there could be a large number of points in uh, on the terrain. So, if I take the average height of all the points I can replace in my formula here h average and I can get the average value of the scale. So, instead of calculating the scale at each point a b c d I just calculate the average scale of the photograph and how I determine this average scale I will have the elevations of several points on the photograph in the terrain and using the contours or using the other means if I derive the height of those points I take the average height of that point and replace here focal length and flying height is known to me I can compute the average scale of the vertical photo and I can use this average scale now to carry out further measurements from this photograph. So, if I have to write a very general expression I can remove that average average word here in general I can write s is equal to f upon capital H minus a small h. So, where h is the average height of the terrain. So, if I know the average height of the terrain I can calculate the average scale of the photograph. So, what this is indicating? This is indicating that the photographic scale is directly proportional to the focal length of the camera lens. So, when I am using the camera with a larger focal length a larger scale value will be obtained because it is directly proportional to the scale and vice versa. It also varies inversely with the flying height. So, capital H is my flying height. So, if my flying height is more then the scale varies inversely with the flying height. So, scale will decrease if the flying height increases. So, if my aircraft goes further up so scale will decrease and in photographic mission the focal length and flying height as we know they are constant we are computing well in advance. So, in other words I can say that scale is dependent on the height of the terrain. So, depending upon the height of the terrain undulation in the terrain and average uh, height of the terrain the scale is dependent. So, I would say uh, looking at this relationship that is scale of a photograph is not uniform it is varying from point to point and uh, because it is varying from point to point. So, it is always better to determine the average value of the scale first. Now, uh, using this relationship we can do the reverse computation also. Suppose we know the scale of the photograph, we know the average height of the terrain and we know the flying height. That means, the same relationship which we have computed just now I can determine capital H which is on the left side here focal length is known to me H is known to me from the topographical map or the contours of the area and if the scale is known to me I can do the reverse calculation to know how high the aircraft was when the photograph was taken. This is just a numerical example uh, how to calculate uh, here the focal length is 125 uh, mm focal length of the camera lens. Uh, the height of the aircraft above mean sea level is 2780 and the average elevation of the terrain is also known to us 500 meter. So, calculate the scale average scale of this particular photograph. So, it is a straightforward you have to simply substitute the value when you are substituting the value uh, very important point is this here f f is in millimeter because it is a very small value other values are in meter here. So, you have to just check whether you are substituting the value in the correct units or not if if you do not do that then the scale values will differ. So, when I am substituting the value in meter here also focal length so scale comes out to be 1 is to 15000. Now, it might happen also that when you are doing this kind of a computation your scale comes out to be 15100 or 15009. So, it is very very important to know that this always round off the scale value never write in decimal and you have to 
round off to the next value. So, a scale could be either 15,000 or 16,000 or 17,000 you know something like that we can use this figure to represent the scale. Now, through this I will I can show you one relationship between uh, scale flying height and the ground distance. So, in this particular figure uh, there are three flying heights 1000 meter flying height, 2000 meter flying height and 5000 meter flying height. Uh, photographs have been taken for the ground from three different heights. So, we know that as the height increases the area covered on the ground will increase. So, 1000 meter will cover 230 meter on the ground only 230 meter by 230 meter, 2000 meter height we will cover much larger area 460 and at 5000 we will cover 1150 meter. So, if we use our same relationship focal length is known to us which is 10 centimeter and now we are using the same relationship uh, assuming that the ground is flat. So, photo scale is focal length divided by the height above the ground f upon h. So, we can uh, calculate the scale of the photograph. So, in first case we are getting 1000 scale, in second case we are getting 20000 scale, in third case we are getting 50000 scale. So, we are getting 3 scales photograph at this height focal length is 10 and the ground area which is covered also can be calculated uh, very simple once we know the photo distance and photo scale we can calculate the ground distance which is covered. So, a scale is important to us in order to know the distance dimensions in order to then compute the area of a, a particular figure. So, that uh, we can do with the help of the scale. So, once the scale is known then I can calculate the ground distance 230 meter, 460 meter and 1150 meter. So, you can see that there is a relationship between the scale as well as the flying height as and the area which is covered on the ground. So, on the photograph it is shown here at 1 is to 1000 scale only the red box just the small area will be covered by one single photograph. And if I wanted to know how much area will be covered by this photograph I know the format, format is 23 centimeter by 23 centimeter. So, I have to multiply by the square of the scale on both sides. So, I will get the area. Similarly, at 20000 scale similar calculation I will get the area and at 30000 scale next photograph I will get the area. So, you can see the difference in the area. Okay. So, as you are changing the scale the area uh, changes many fold. So, you require many many photographs in fact, to cover a large area by those uh, large scale photographs. Now, photo coordinates also is very very important here. Uh, we have to uh, measure the photo coordinates and we can use these coordinates to determine the ground coordinates once I know the scale. So, as has been explained earlier also that uh, uh, our principal point is uh, the origin point with respect to which we are going to measure the coordinates on the photograph. So, first thing would be that you have to locate the principal point of the photograph by joining the opposite fiducial marks of that. And uh, then you determine the uh, conjugate principal point join them together and you can get the direction of the flight line x axis. Now, if I draw a perpendicular line to that this is my y axis. So, once I get x axis and y axis on the photograph now I have 4 quadrant here. So, I have 4 quadrant the photograph is divided and as we carry out measurement in coordinate geometry, we keep uh, the notations also in the mind uh, in which quadrant the x is negative and in which quadrant the y is negative. Now, any point which is falling in a quadrant we can measure the coordinates uh, on the photograph with the help of a, a scale which is called parallax scale. We are not using a normal scale. 
uh, in photogrammetry we are using a scale called parallax scale because it has a better least count than our normal scale. So, we are using that parallax scale in fact to carry out the measurement of any point. If I take a point A here in the first quadrant, so I know how much is the x distance and how much is the y distance. So, the coordinates of this point I can denote by x and y. So, likewise we can find out the coordinates of all the points which are present in different quadrants. We have to take care of the proper sign. Now, we can compute the length of the line between the two points with the help of the coordinate systems. So, if we uh, pay attention to this uh, diagram, in this diagram point A and point B, they are two ground points at different heights. So, these are the two points, we have to determine the distance between these two points with the help of the coordinates. So, if uh, uh, I locate this point, point A and point B on the aerial photograph, these two points they are lying in the different quadrant and uh, with respect to principal point of the photograph which is this point here, I carry out the measurements. So, here it is shown that the coordinates on the ground are x a and y a and x b y, y b are the coordinates of point a and b on the ground and photographic coordinates are small x a y a and small x b y b which we have to measure using the parallax scale. So, using the parallax scale we can carry out these measurements. So, we know actually the photo coordinates of the two points and we if we know the height of these points h a and h b above the ground then we can uh, further calculate the other parameters. So, let us see the computation of the length of the line between the two points. So, same diagram we are using here and again we are using the property of the similar triangle. So, when we are using for point number A, we are using the property of the similar triangle, the ratio uh, of the two distances and we are replacing by their coordinates x a and y a. And also I can equate them similarly y a and y a coordinates. And we know that that this ratio we have already computed is f upon h minus h a. So, using the similar coordinate geometry and using the principle of that coordinate geometry and similar triangles, we are establishing the relationship between the coordinates which we know and focal length capital H which is the flying height and the height of the point. Now, similarly I am establishing a relationship for point number B. So, when I am establishing a uh, relationship for point number B, my ratio will come out to be x B upon y B or y B upon capital Y B is equal to f upon h minus h B. Now, from these two relationships, uh, I can calculate ground coordinates because I do not know the ground coordinates, I have measured on the photo only. So, uh, in the using equation uh, 3 and equation 4, I can calculate what is capital X A, what is capital X B, capital Y A and capital Y B. Because here everything is known to me in this relationship, equation 5 and equation 6, everything is known to me, capital H is known to me, flying height is known to me, focal length is known to me and the elevations of these points are also known to me from the contours. Coordinates I have measured under the ground. So, once I know these coordinates uh, very simple uh, relationship then I can use. So, uh, in coordinate geometry also uh, we have actually uh, used uh, uh, relationship to calculate the length. So, this is a generalized relationship for x and this is the generalized relationship for y which I can write from the previous relationships which I have derived. So, I determine the ground coordinates and using now those ground coordinates, 
I am substituting in the relationship which is a very simple relationship we have used in the coordinate geometry L, L is the distance between the two points it is x a minus x b whole square plus y a minus y b whole square. If you sum them up and take the square root of it you will get the distance between these two points. So, I am using this well known relationship uh, x a x b y a y b in this relationship they are the computed values uh, using the photogrammetric techniques and now I can get the distance L. Now, what I can do is I know the ground distance which uh, uh, I have computed I can also calculate the photo distance I know the coordinates. So, ground distance and photo distance if I can find out then mathematically then scale of the photograph again I can calculate with the ratio of the two distances. So, I know that it is the ratio of the two distance, distance on the photo and distance uh, on the ground and mathematically we have done the computation A B and capital A B. So, I can also determine the scale of the photograph. So, the coordinate measurement is a very very important aspect in photogrammetry using these coordinates uh, not only the distance between the two point we can calculate, uh, but I can use the dimensions of a plot now to calculate the area and I can calculate the scale also once I know the two corresponding distances. So, determination of a scale indirectly can also be done using the coordinate system. Now, these coordinates are uh, uh, important in the sense that uh, uh, our modern surveying methods or geometrics engineering that is all based on the coordinate systems also. So, if I know the coordinates and if I know the third dimensional coordinate also the height also of the various points I can use these coordinate systems into uh, my software into some kind of a uh, uh, model uh, I can create a 3D model. Uh, with the help of these x, y and z coordinates and once I have a 3D model of the area then the computations of area, computation of the volume, computation of the distances they become much much easier to me. So, uh, there are uh, many uh, exercises in photogrammetry where these coordinates which we are measuring with respect to principal point of the photograph of the various points are used to carry out the computation work. So, in photogrammetry uh, as we have seen in this exercise also that what is required is first of all the very first thing is that the scale should be known to us. Once the scale is known to us and we carry out certain measurements on the photograph itself, uh, we can uh, determine the distances and we can determine the other parameters. While carrying out the measurement on the photograph very important thing to remember is that uh, our points should lie probably in the center part of the photograph. If the points are lying along the edges of the photograph outer edges of the photograph then the chances of distortion because of the perspective projections because of the radial lines. The, um, chances of error which is present on the photograph they are more. So, uh, we have to be careful while doing the photogrammetric measurements, the coordinate measurements or the distance measurement the points should lie roughly in the center of the photograph. So, that our uh, measurements are very very accurate. Now, this is a, a, a manual uh, method uh, totally manual method of uh, determining the coordinates and determining the distances. But once you have the digital photograph then uh, you can do very very precise uh, measurements of the coordinates uh, you, once you create the geometry of the photograph you can determine x coordinate y coordinate as well as the z coordinates digitally and all that computation there is a module available in the software all that computational work 
can be done with the help of those coordinates. So, the coordinate basically is the basis of the entire um, modern uh, geoinformatics tools. So, we are you are going to learn at the end also that how to uh, use digital photos in order to carry out the similar kind of exercise. So, I think that is all about the today's lecture. Thank you very much.